Good afternoon, and this is Steve Gladys uh, um, doing my interviews with, and today's my interview with is Dory Ramsey, the former H the head of uh, HR for uh, Washington Guess, a really large company that affects us all in this area. It certainly affects me. They send me my guess. And uh, Dory's also, it was also the, before that, uh, we got promoted in that large position. She was the head of talent. So she knows a lot about talent and talent strategies and things like this. And I thought, in, in this time of COVID, it should be a perfect person to talk to. So Dory, welcome. Great to see you. Thank you, Steve. Great to be with you today. And uh, Dory, why don't we start with like, tell us just a little bit about your background so people know, you know, kind of where you come from. I know you've taught at Georgetown and done all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so um, I've been in this kind of human resources, talent management, leadership and development field for um, over two decades. And so I've done a little bit of everything within HR, um, but this is truly my passion is around talent development, learning and development. So that's uh, now that I have gone out on my own in my own consulting practice, that's really the areas I'll be focused on. And your talent practice is called Ramsey? Uh, Ramsey Consulting. Consulting, yeah. So, and we've known each other for a long time. I've had the opportunity to work with you and and Dory is probably one of the most experienced uh, CHROs that I know, which is the reason I'm interviewing her for this series. So Dory, uh, what are you hearing about these days? Now that we're, I mean, we're all like in our houses. Uh, what are you hearing from people uh, about, uh, about uh, talent management, about uh, human resources? Tell us what's, what's been going on. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's, um, I think right now, people are still, a lot of organizations are still grappling with how do we address immediate needs, but really starting to look forward and say, mm -hmm. what's the future going to look like? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of scenario planning going on. One of the clients I'm working with is looking at, so what is the future going to look like? What are some of the uncertainties? Um, one of the big ones is around social distancing and mm -hmm. is social distancing in some form or fashion going to be permanent? And how is that going to impact the business? So is the business going to change? So if you think about something like a restaurant, yeah. a lot of restaurants have done an amazing job of kind of dealing with immediate issues and saying, we can't have our customers come inside the restaurant. So they've pivoted, they're doing curbside pickup, they're doing delivery. So what's the future look like? Will they, once they can have diners in the restaurant, will they no longer offer those options? Maybe they will offer those options. So, you know, a lot of companies are really thinking about what's next, what's the future look like? And are there some things that we actually wanna take with us as we move forward? Um, you know, a lot of talk about remote work. Jobs that, that we had said over and over again, cannot be done from home, have to be done in the office. We have found that they can be done remotely. So what, what are we going to do moving so, forward? Dory, have you seen uh, any specific examples along the way? Like, I know you were at Washington Gas. I mean, can those guys, are those guys like using digital um, 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 uh, valves or something now? I mean, are, or can they do things digitally? I mean, it, No, they can't. Possible? And so, so, so some jobs have, still have to be done. And okay. we're seeing that with the essential workers that are out there, even as we're working in our homes, yeah. there are a lot of people that are still out there working. Um, one of the clients that I'm working with, the, the employees do need to go into customers' homes. Oh. Right now, they are not performing that work. Mm -hmm. um, but at some point, that work will start back up. But will it look different? Probably will. Um, I, I would I would expect that people will want to know that someone coming into their home is not sick, doesn't have any symptoms, um, is practicing different types of safety measures than perhaps they did in the past. And you know, one of the things that we need to think about now as we think about those strategies for our business and to fulfill the business mission mm -hmm. and, and really to um, continue to be successful, what does that mean for the people that we employ? Mm. So, you know, when you think about um, a service technician that goes into a customer's home, well, they had some interaction before. The level of interaction 
and the type of customer service skills and training that they will need is probably going to be greater. Um, you know, they, they have more interaction with the customer. You know, it's interesting because uh, Lexus, for example, and the high-end cars um, in the past have, have, all, have, they're sort of already in the future because they come out and get your car, bring it in, deliver it. And now I notice that Honda just sent me a big card saying, we'll come out, we'll pick up your car, yeah. we cover the seats, we do all these things. So it, it, in a sense, it's like the future's already been here with, with Lexus or, you know, cars like that. And, and now other companies are saying, you know, that's a pretty good practice. Have you seen any I think of that? You're, you're absolutely right. So, and this is, again, how we have to think about what is it that we take forward with us? So what are the things that we're learning that actually probably were a good idea to be doing? Mm -hmm. um, some of those employees who now can work remotely, we may not decide that five days a week working remotely yeah. is ideal. There may be some other balance, but we may decide that we're not going back to the fact that everyone needs to be in the office doing their job. So I, I think those are the conversations that we need to have now so that we're prepared because there's a lot of implications. Um, probably one of the most critical is leadership. So how do we lead in this new environment? If a manager was used to all of their employees being in a, a location where they were interacting um, and now they're working remotely, does that require different leadership skills? I think leadership is really being tested right now. So um, what, would you, what, what are some of the things, practical things you're seeing or hearing in terms of people keeping in contact or exercising mm -hmm. leadership both so there are three uh, i'm working on a paper now and there are three they, this is based on a bunch of research we've read there's sort of three cycles there's the reaction cycle we're still in right we're trying to figure it out yeah. and there's a recovery and then there's the then there's reimagining the future you know have you seen in this reaction phase have you seen anything that you think oh this guy's doing it right i, I think we're actually in the recovery phase for a lot of okay. companies Mm -hmm. um, I think the reaction phase was more, and some, some of the reaction phase is still more around right. financing, um, yeah. just how do we stay afloat until we can start reimagining. But, um, you know, one of the, the clients that I'm working with, we're definitely we're in recovery and we're thinking about what specifically is this going to look like? Are there, and there are some employees, even though this is a, a business where, it's, it is, uh, most of the employees are going into customers' homes, so there, yeah. there will be some implications there, certainly. Um, but there is a segment that now they can work remotely. So how do we make sure that we're keeping employees engaged? It is, it really comes down to a lot of communication, um, leading with empathy, mm -hmm. understanding that we hear a lot, we're all in this together. And while mm -hmm. we're all impacted, by this pandemic, people are experiencing it very differently. And so there's- so, you know, Talk there more are about this, that. Talk well, there's essential that. workers that are still yeah. getting up and going to work. Mm -hmm. And so they've got a set of concerns. Um, and then you've got remote workers, maybe working from home for the first time, maybe have children at home that they have to homeschool while they're working. Um, so you've got, you know, we're experiencing this differently. You might have um, elderly parents that you can't see because they're in a nursing home. So people have very, this is a very personal experience that we're all going through. So I think leaders need to, first of all, they should already know the people that work for them. Right. Um, if, if they don't have a foundation of trust and if they don't know the people they work for them, they've got some catching up to do. No. But I think that, you know, the best practices I see are continuing to engage. I was talking to actually someone that, um, that I worked with at Washington Gas a few days ago, and um, he has a team of about 35 people. He individually has called every one of them, mm -hmm. and um, now he, he does have a good relationship with them, so he knows a lot about, but he's asking about their families, he's asking about um, you know, what's happening with the children and school. So that's, that, those are the things that need to be happening now. You know, I, I read in an article, I've forgotten uh, the, the origin of it, it was by McKinsey or one of these um, think tanks, but they said, uh, or, or maybe it was Gartner, um, 
there are the three things you ask on a call is first, how are you doing? Second, how is your family? And third, you know, then you talk about business later, you know, yeah. in that sequence. Um, Dory, talk a little bit um, about uh, talent strategy a little bit. You know, I know that that's a, a field of yours. How does, how does that change now? Is, I mean, we used to do these strategies out one year, five yeah. years, 10 years, you know, talk about what happened. What do we, and when you don't, when you don't know, you really don't know, how, how does that work? So um, one of them that I'm working on right now is um, looking at this possibility of social distancing that will be in place for the next, let's just say it's the next year, some type of social distancing. Um, so what does that mean for the work? And, you know, really what it gets back to always is grounded in the mission of the company and the organizational values. Uh -huh. So how do you continue to fulfill the mission while making sure that you are living, reinforcing the organizational values? And what does that mean? Um, uh -huh. Is the work changing? There may be some aspects of work that's, that are changing. And you really have to define that to say, then... Who do we hire? How many people do we need? What's the work? Um, how do we make sure that they are developed and that they have the skill set they need? Um, what does leadership look like? You may find that you need uh, different leaders. And during times of, of real uncertainty, um, leaders have to be able to communicate effectively. They have to have empathy. So there, there may be some changes that are needed in mm -hmm. either the leadership uh, team or or maybe in some type of um, interactions that you're having with the leaders to reinforce the right behaviors. So, you know, it's really looking at the set of uncertainties and saying, given that, how is your business changing and who are the people that we need and how do we engage them? How do we reward them? How do we develop them? And, and most importantly, how do we lead them? You know, it's interesting because I was talking to one guy uh, recently and he said, um, I mean, it was this morning, I was talking to a police department and a very big one. And they, um, and he said, you know, we've been, we've been having these Zoom meetings. I had actually introduced this department to Zooms about a year ago. And uh, he said, we, we went right into Zoom. And he said, he said, he said, we're having better meetings now than we ever had. And we don't have to spend an hour going in and an hour coming out back to our stations, which I think is, is interesting. Uh, and, and, and telling. So, you know, some of the things that are happening now, like you suggested, are going to continue because they're just, but they're, they've just changed the landscape. Um, Dory, with such uncertainty, talk a little bit about um, scenarios or scenario planning. How does that play? And I know that you've, to you've talked to me about that in the past. Yeah. So, I, you know, again, this kind of gets back to the uncertainties and to say, um, you know, again, getting back to social distancing, because that's going to impact yeah. every business. If, if we have some type of social distancing in place indefinitely, or at least for the next year, um, you really have to think about that. What are the implications? And for every business, they'll be different. Yeah. But what are the implications of social distancing um, from a, a customer perspective, a service delivery model? You may, uh, a company may decide that they want to offer different products based mm -hmm. on the fact that we now have the social distancing in place. So you really, you know, start with the company's mission and then look at what are some of the uncertainties. Now there's a lot of other uncertainties that may impact a particular business. Mm -hmm. um, it may be funding. Um, it could be, yeah. uh, you know, the technology that's available. So really have to think about the uncertainties that are impacting a business and then kind of play out what are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what are all the implications? Mm -hmm. And then the area that, that I would be interested in is then what does that mean for the workforce? Like who yeah, do you how, need how does that apply? to fulfill that mission, right? Yeah, and there's talking about, uh, um, some people talking about, uh, and I, you know, I've discussed similar kinds of things, but it's a, a worst case scenario. What if this yeah. takes, goes on for a year, Best case scenario, it goes on until the fall and it's not nearly as bad. And then most likely, which is goes right. on for three to six months, we find some sort of uh, amelioration or maybe not, uh, you know, cure-all vaccine. 
and 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 you know those that kind of planning is what people are starting to move toward are you seeing yeah. some of that or, or yeah and i think that? you know kind of thinking about social distancing it could be that um what we have currently you know we are kind of staying in quarantine status is in place um what if it's 10 people or more or 10 people or less right and um, what yeah. if it totally opens up so yeah. you know yeah. even if you think about something like one specific area of uncertainty there's a whole lot of variations of what it means um and and how people really respond to that so it's you know right now we've got a kind of a situation where we were hoping for vaccines we're hoping for treatments uh -huh. um, that's another uncertainty if there yeah. is a vaccine that yeah. We we hopefully get sooner rather than later. What does that mean? And do we change and go back to because that that will that will um, lessen people's anxiety about interacting more closely. So th those those types of scenarios we have to kind of think. Yeah, through. Dory, are you seeing what kind of a psychological effect is a, that you're seeing out in the workplace? I mean, among your clients and among your friends and so forth and so on in the business. What kind of psychological stuff are you seeing, both on the manager side or, or the leader side and on the, yeah. you know, the worker I, side? I, I, you know, I have to say human beings are so incredibly adaptable and resilient. So mm -hmm. I, I think um, the most important thing is people having a support system. Mm -hmm. Because that is what is helping people kind of get through this day to day and and realize that this isn't forever. Mm -hmm. um, this is something unprecedented. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling stressed or you're feeling kind of overwhelmed, you're not alone. And yeah. so, I, you know, that's that's mainly what what I see is that um, and you know, I see people that have support systems. My mm -hmm. concern is for the people that we don't see, that don't have those support systems because they're, they're not reaching out to others. Because um, I think yeah. everyone's, regardless of how we're experiencing this differently, everyone is experiencing it in some way. So everyone's impacted. Yeah, it's, it's not, <clears throat> yeah, there's nobody that's not impacted. I mean, Everywhere right. you go right now, uh, people didn't even know how to spell Zoom, and now it's a household word. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I have to say, I was Zoom before it was cool. You were. I know. Like, you introduced me. Like country western. <laughs> so, Dory, as we sort of wrap up, let me ask you this question. What are three pieces of advice you would give CEOs of companies moving forward? You know, two um, or three. You know. I, I think, first of all, is, again, about leadership. There any time of uncertainty leaders are so critically important they're always important but even mm -hmm. more so in times of uncertainty um really focus on your leadership team making sure that they're aligned um that they're exhibiting the behaviors that mm -hmm. exhibit the, that are the values of your organization critically important the things that leaders do now really is going to set the mm -hmm. tone in the employment brand for the next many years. Um, no, so the way that employees are treated, the way that you interact, having that empathy, critically, critically important. So I'd say, you know, number one, um, really about the leadership. Um, number two, I would say that you do have to start planning and, and you do have to start thinking about what does the future look like with all its uncertainties and um, think about the things that you want to continue and you want to take with you because what what you don't want to have happen is we get through this and then you're like okay back to business as usual because we're not going to go back to business as usual so be intentional mm -hmm. about the things that you want to take forward and the things that you know clearly you 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 don't want to take forward um, like yeah. some of the stress um and then, you know, I think number three is just having um, personally for people to think about their own, what they've learned through this and maybe some self-reflection because a lot of us have had more time yeah. by ourselves 
um, at home than what we have ever had in our entire lives. Mm -hmm. So hopefully everyone's had a little bit of time for reflection. And mm -hmm. so, you know, hopefully you are personally have had some learning and growth and maybe some lessons that you can take with you and, and maybe make you a better person. Great advice, Dory. Those are great pieces of advice. I, I, I'm so grateful for your taking the time. I know you're busy right now and I appreciate your taking the time to, uh, especially those last three pieces are really right on point. Um, this has been uh, Steve Gladys uh, interview with Dory Ramsey of Ramsey Consulting, former CHRO of Washington Gas and uh, a dear friend. Thank you, Dory. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Bye now.